Yesterday, the Minister of Information was giving explanations to the situation in, uh, of things in the country. There was a, a statement released from his office, Mr. Mohamed Idris, strongly dismissing some claims by trying to get some commitment from Nigerians by assuring that the government is doing its best part of a statement uh, where he dismissed claims of relocation of some departments in the two agencies. Uh, political moves, he said, are not uh, down to marginalize a section of the country in the area of security, this is what the minister says, quote, All threats are being boldly confronted. We are taking the fight to the criminal's den with a promising result. Within the last week, several bandits, kidnappers, and militants have been neutralized or arrested. And the economy, this is what he said, quote, Regarding the economy, all relevant ministries and agencies of the federal government are working in coordinated fashion to bring down inflation, stabilize foreign exchange rates, and create a truly enabling environment for business and investment. The Nigeria that President Tunubu seeks to build is one where no one is left behind. Let's get to talk about these issues. I'm being joined by a member of the opposition, a chieftain of the People's Democratic Party, Chief Shegun Shogumi, just as live here in our Abuja studio. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. Thank you, Sharon. It's nice to be here. I appreciate your time tonight. Uh, give us your own assessment. I mean, this is government saying, uh, these are how things are looking. Yes, we know that there is suffering in the land. We know that people are feeling the pinch, but then these are the effort government is uh, putting into areas that are affecting the average citizen. But your own front, from your own point of view, as a member of the opposition, do you see in the same way? Mm. Sharon, I think that the best thing to say is that the government of President Bola Tinumbu has dropped the ball and lost the plot. When you come into government and we tell you that don't be too parochial with your appointment, we are front loading the potential that almost everything you do will begin to have ethnic coloration. Here we are today. You were here. I had this conversation with you. When you take all this um, finance infrastructure and put it in one tribe, and maybe then you now decide that based on what you are seeing, you need to move CBN, one aspect of it to Lagos, you need to do this, you need to do that. Little wonder everybody is now thinking that you are running a urbanized agenda in the country. But I warned you. So that's them. The second thing is that eight months is a very long time for you to reflate the economy, especially when you have taken a lot of money through the you know, subsidy program. If it took you only a second, immediately they saw you in and you asked, the subsidy is gone, the subsidy is gone. How, how much time do you need to tell them that if you don't increase the salary of the civil servant, you are not going to put money back into the system in a sustainable manner? They're there at it for eight months. Okay, insecurity. I know what and what the last administration of President Momodou Buhari, where they had reached. They had gotten to a point where they bought more equipment, the armed forces were beginning to charge at them, they are taking back territory that were lost, but you know what has happened to them? The entire space now is having to deal with issues that they can never, I repeat with due respect to them, they do not have the mental capability or the gravitas to solve. People are getting kidnapped in the corridors of Lagos and the Southwest. Maybe the Southwest has even abated a little bit because of the proactive efforts of some of their governors. The entire north central of this country is now like literally a war There are those who say in, in government as of today, they say, look, some of these issues are over bloated. Those some, I mean, they are, they are exaggerated by yeah. some Nigerians. So, I mean, there are those in government who means? say Do that you, listen, things are not as difficult or as bad as it show, is show, in show, terms show, of security. I don't play the politics of let's pull the country down. I don't even play the politics of hating the commander in chief. I'm telling you that you cannot come to the Nigerian people and say to them that a country that has normalized condolences today, condolences tomorrow, condolences the next day, and conversational annoyance of saying highly placed for more than 10 years cannot come and tell us that we are overreacting. Would you wake the dead that we have, we have killed? Look at what has happened in Oyo. Some guys there as governor, not, money, not focusing on the work he's supposed to focus on, They've gotten a crater of, you know, activities that has, you know, what they're calling preliminary investigation, stockpiling of minus weapons. That looks like a military-grade ordinance, just looking at the crater in the middle. 
And you will ask yourself, what exactly is the responsibility of state governors at the subnational level to make sure that they can profile their own state? So how are you going to solve that? Just before I got into your studio, I was just being told that some kings have been, uh, have been adopted in some part of the Southwest. If you're, it's alleged that some have been killed. Some are. Look, my brother, let's go to the economy. You are, you, are, you are pretending as if you don't know that over and above the fact that the currency of a country is a medium of exchange, that you do not know that national pride and integrity is also embedded in the value of the currency. Why would you run a situation in the country where the national currency of our country has become the pawn of jokes even by people that are spending CFR? Leave that. Come to national cohesion. Let me tell you, my dear Mr. President, President Bolami Tunubu, you know me, I know you. I have nothing against you. You are president now, do the job. You will do well to go and take a look at how the northern supporters of your party, who worked very hard to bring you in, the kinds of opinions they have about you now, because you have suddenly become a presidency that they think does not give them enough access. Other than that, why will your senators come together under another senator's forum and begin to bellow like that, since you have a majority. And please, you know, even the management of creative narrative is not being done properly. I find it extremely offensive on behalf of those of them who have been standing with the APC, standing with this party for so long, that suddenly a tongue coat Red Boala is now the one that is getting in, in pictures in the villa, getting pictures in front. Where is Ayo Yalowo? Who crosses sword with me all the time? Where is Joy Bukwe? Who crosses sword with me all the time? Where is uh, Al Hawan? That uh, Hassan. Al Hassan, who crosses sword with me. These are men who have been just like me in, in PDP. Ismaila. Ismaila. All of them who have worked very hard for this party. And suddenly it's Boala now that is eating breakfast in, in the villa. It's Boala that is eating breakfast in Paris. And you expect you expect people to believe that you know what you're doing? But you were telling Boala that he should keep No, for listen, you. that was sarcasm. I don't play that kind of silly game. I don't, go to Boala, I don't need Boala for that. I'm being honest with you. I'm telling you things, and I'm telling the president things that he needs to work on so that he can make his party a bit more stable. Leave that, echo us. You were here, I was here with you when the issue in the border with Nigeria, when they had their coup, and he was bellowing and, and all of that prematurely without even getting enough intelligence. Today, three countries have left an organization that we started in Lagos by the Lagos Treaty on May 28, 1975, a 49-year-old organization. Why? Because you seem to be giving people the impression that you are so much in bed with France when your African brothers are demanding that they get a fair, equitable placing on national conversation. And you have not even defined what our own foreign policy objective is, at least that of your administration. And before you tell me this site has always been in Nigeria, no, please. When President Muhammad Bari was in that villa, almost every president in the West African coast dealt with him with a lot of respect and a lot of difference. Here we are today. Which other area do you want us to talk about? Is it even the general feel of the country? They are creating an impression that this nation is going to become a place where nobody can give them opinion, nobody can criticize them, anybody who criticizes them is going to be abused. And all. Where is Femi Fanica today? While you are white, Bola is sitting in the villa and eating in France. Do you know the amount of work Femi had to do on this time to get them into this, into, into, into this government? When you don't treat the people that have been with you for a long time, never leaving you well, you discourage the ones that are going to even put in energy in the future. Where are the people that were working with you with President Mohamed Buhari? Did your government change power and suddenly become a government that everything that Buhari represented is bad and everybody that worked for Buhari is not available in your cabinet? Let's bring fairness and transparency into this oh, yeah, conversation. Uh, will it be fair mm. to criticize the Bola Tinubu government mm. in the manner in which you have tonight, considering the fact that this government has spent just about eight months in office and they will say, the government will say, they're making... They're building foundations upon which their manifesto, the renewed agenda, the renewed hope agenda is going to stand on. Is it fair to criticize them in that manner, Mr. Shogun? Do you know why we put the leg, the feet of the leaders to fire? It's because as it is, we even over pamper them with privilege. We give them enough privileges to get the job done and we don't have the patience to now begin to pamper them and give them excuses. So you Why? imagine Nigerians are impatient at the moment? Everybody is impatient. You are impatient. I'm impatient. Do you know what the value of currency is? Do you know what the level of inflation is? 
Our currency is going down. It's not rich rock bottom yet. We don't even know their strategy to stabilize it. But you look at the performance on the stock exchange. Listen, you are building bubbles all over the place. Some of us are not stupid, please. You are building bubbles all over the place. And if it busts, you're going to have a bigger catastrophe. Pray. Why is your stock exchange doing so well and your risk sector not doing well? Why is your stock exchange doing so well and inflation is the way to? Let me tell you one of the silliness of their policy. When President Mohamed, with due respect, people are hearing me, I visited him, they're asking me, they are seeing me appreciate him more. It's because with the benefit of hindsight, you can see what he was trying to do. When he changed the currency, you know what would have happened for us if we had kept it instead of them bellowing and shouting and insisting that they want to bring it back? We would have reduced the amount of money in rogue hands that is not playing within the banking sector. The quantum of money that is not playing within the banking sector now is part of the reason why they are chasing the dollar every day. You have increased subsidy. That means that you are getting money, more money to FAC. That means you are giving more money to state and local government. Have you checked to see what they're doing with it? What you are having is that when you see your people just wanting to buy dollar, buy dollar, buy dollar in your country, you have to ask, has our import need in terms of items increased so much? What exactly are we buying? What exactly are we using the dollar? You should know that that is speculation occasioned but, 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 by your mismanagement of your financial policy. Mr. Shaomi, the president has said that some of the policies of his government mm. that are going to buy hard and is like the process of giving birth. The pain is going to come, then laughter and smiles are, are going to come afterwards. Can we as a people give President Bola Tinobu a benefit of the doubt? Even if we don't give him a benefit of the doubt, what can we do apart from, apart from talk to him and tell him let's fix our country? It's not about President Bola Tinobu. Do you believe in his capacity the as a president, as the leader of this the country? The election is over. This is not politics. This is national development. This is national cohesion. This is national peace. This is regional stability. This is making sure that every part of this country feels that this government and this presidency represents them. I'm not the one creating the narrative of urbanization. I'm not. I don't believe in certain, but that's what it's looking like. And people are getting extremely irritated by it. I traveled around this country. I listened to the deeper things that have been said in the far corners of this nation. And I can tell you, postponing the management of the Nigerian economy in such a manner that the Nigerian people can feed, can feel safe, can sleep well at night, or at least can be hopeful is an urgent responsibility. All their fancy talk, somebody is getting bad. Somebody, why were they quick to give themselves in the budget all of the things that will make their own life comfortable now? Why didn't they delay the things that will make them comfortable so that they can pay more attention to the things that will make the Nigerian poor a bit able to say, yes, this government is going in the right direction. And so my attitude has always been, let us surface the issues, let us discuss it, let us even suggest some solutions. But the way they're going about things... Let me, let me, let me ask you this. Ask me. If you look at the personality of, and the profile mm. or the pedigree of the commander-in-chief, Bola Ahmed Tinubu, mm -hmm. do you think he has a capacity to deal... Uh, with the problem and the challenges of Nigeria today. I'll put it to you this way. Sometimes ago, just after he had won, someone had come to say they wanted to do a documentary of those who have known him for a long time. And they, for one reason or the other, they came to me. And you know what I said? I said, if Bola Ahmed Tinubu, now president, does not have the capability to fix the economy, I doubt if anybody within his generation can so do. And I also added another caveat. I said, I know that he respects other nations, America and all that, but that I know that he ought to understand that Nigeria has to pull itself up by the bootstrap and fix his own country. You can't run this, the biggest nation that is black in sub-Saharan Africa, that is very hopeful of the future, on an assumption that people are going to think suddenly the presidency of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, his address of visitation is no longer England, our traditional partner, it has suddenly become France. And with due respect to the French, they are the only ones who have to do a survey of all the French speaking francophone countries to know exactly what their reputation and their perception is. What is our president doing there 24 hours? Are you, are you then surprised that 24 to 36 hours after he, he arrived in France, countries in West Africa who feel that France is the issue that they have with, with all of their own local politics are saying they want out of equal? Please, let me ask you, should a 50-year-old, near 50-year-old organization just wake up in the morning and say they are going out, and you begin to shop to the diplomacy to say what's going on here. 
Yeah, I accept that, yes. They've done a coup. The federal government of Nigeria cannot really support a coup. But what happened to all the dialogue processes that are supposed to be going on behind to make your African brothers understand that Nigeria is a nation that would be on the issue of the ECOWAS, the yes. president has made it clear that a demo proper democratic process should be allowed to, to first start in the, in, on the continent when you, and uh, in the stop region. Mm -hmm. And military coup should be discouraged. If not, if you look at the way and manner military coup mm -hmm. are, are getting more popular mm -hmm. in Africa, mm -hmm. it gives a lot of worry and is a threat to the Democracy. Do you know? Do, do you, you know think that that is that that is uh, 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 that is not uh, charitable enough? Do you know the strength of a political a presidential declaration of that nature within the subregion? It is inversely related to the amount of respect they have for you and your words. If you make statements and you see that your African labor, this is a oh god. This is the Nigeria that will sit down in Abuja, will quell coup in Syria alone, will sit down in Abuja, will compare compliance in, 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 in Gambia, will sit down in Nigeria, will resolve issues in Liberia, will sit down in Nigeria. I, I can't, how many times the president of uh, Nigeria used to come to Abuja just to come and greet the real big brother, which is the presidency of Nigeria? How did we become this? Cheo. If nobody can tell Alashad Balabe to know the truth, I will. I will, because I, you see, if I... Now, how do you summarize it, though? What do you think is going on? No, I think what has happened, I'll tell you. You see, when, in, when a leader is coming, and he's coming with the mindset that the people that he has been with all of his life are the only ones that know, he's going to have a skewed appointment. And once his appointment is skewed, what he's going to do is that the ones that don't want to talk or even get themselves irritated by what's going on will just take their capacity and move away. And that's what's happening. Look, the kinds of things I'm hearing around Bajabi Amila, the national, the chief security, the chief of staff, the internet is filled with it. Some of them may be rumors. Some of them are things that are still being investigated. But I was here with you when they, when they were asking me and I was saying, that capacity to do that job does not exist there. And it has nothing personal to do with him. He's my brother, he's my friend, I like him. I like the fact that he has done a lot of things in Lagos, which is, uh, what, what do you call it, give back. But the Office of the National Security Advisor of the government that even has some potential covetousness in his history cannot be run by people that are too covetous. If people that are around a man that is as straight as, as Buhari can be as covetous as we are now finding out, what then do you expect when you put the covertures to be leading the covertures? That's the problem. So uh, if you are to advise, advise and uh, in seeking solution, mm. because the country is for everyone. Of course. And the best of the country is what we all should pursue. Okay. Now, the question will be, mm. how do we go from here as a people? First things first, I'll first of all say that I've become convinced now over time that when you leave the office, especially when it's not a hostile takeover, you cannot disdain the experience, opinion, and suggestion, and the help of your predecessor. He cannot, if he does that, he does it at his own peril. The experience that people like Buhari bring to the table is a lot. He needs to visit him more. He needs to consult him more, especially when it comes to sub-region issues and the fringes of the north. That's my position. The other thing on the economy, he needs to let the people understand, especially Wale Edu uh, and all of the, uh, the guy in Kadoso and all of them. He needs to let them understand that. I am not trying to build an economy solely for GDP so that Brenton Wood organization like World Bank and IMF can be giving me pass mark. I'm not interested. I am interested in building an economy that is resilient and serves the poor people of Nigeria and gives them the opportunity to begin to live the type of life that that renewed hope is supposed to be. And every second we spend waiting before we begin to give them this thing is too late for me. Look, let me tell you what would have happened if you had increased salaries of civil servants. They would have been getting that increased salary in a sustainable manner. The private sector would have followed up. You know, they would have done a little bit more to keep their workforce. That money would have gone back into the market. People would have been, you know, you would have started to see the economy growing. You can't run a big economy on palliative, especially when you are even running the palliative as wholesale instead of as retail. That's that. You need, Mr. President, with due respect, sir, I fear that you may lose the economy or you may not do well on the economy. And that would be like a big shame because I feel that that's your strong point. I truly feel that Bolatinobu's strong point is the economy. But I expect you to understand that we're not going to create a Nigerian economy that makes the rich richer 
and that makes the poor more miserable because there are more poor people in this country. You can't be impressing me with the numbers of Aliko Dangote's uh, stock exchange growth in such a short time. What's that? What am I going to do with that? Let me let me uh, uh, wrap up the conversation in uh, with some other issues relating to your party, for okay. example. You visited President, uh, former President Muhammad Buhari. Yes, I did. What, what, what were your intentions? Thank you very much. You know, Shion, you know, you are my go-to man when it comes to honest conversation. I had been seeing for some time that what's going on here, something is not adding up. And then I went to visit the President of Brazil, whom you know I go to often. And I was agonizing to him that, look, Mister, you people can feed yourself. We, we can't feed ourselves. He sent me to his Minister of Agri. The guy started telling me things that resembled school feeding program, rice, this, this. I was almost, and I don't speak Portuguese, so somebody has to be interpreting. I was hearing almost the policies that this guy was, probably was saying, is this what Barry was trying to do? Put that in the bag. The second thing is that I started seeing that, okay, the Southeasterners are quite upset with their desire to be president in this country. And I said, okay, let me go to him and have a conversation with that. Mr. We collaborated with ourselves to give the Yorubas the presidency when Obasanjo, when we brought Obasanjo, when June 12 happened. Are we going to watch the South Easterners struggle and be angry and won't figure out a way to figure out this thing? Then the top question I wanted to ask him, very simple. I said, Mr. President, sir, every you we grew up, I'm the son of a soldier. I went to the military school, I was a head boy. We grew up believing that this country is, there's one knot that is big that can stabilize the others when they start to quarrel. You people have lost the whole of the middle belt. People are dying there. And you are running the risk that you are going to lose the Northeast. Because when the Northwest stands up for election, the people of the Northeast back then. But when the Northeast stands up for election, you guys pretend as if there's another alternative conversation on the table. Those were the type of questions did I was asking. Did you get the answers? Yeah, I did. But I would have given it to you, Sean. But then unfortunately, the, even the obedience and the people that I thought I was, you know, trying to say, let's have a conversation, let's broaden the conversation, let's broaden the discourse. They were damn too angry, they were just abusing. And I said, what's going on here? If everybody wants to be tribal, then I will be tribal too. What, is the, be tri what is the most inspiring or the most uh, uh, wow. instructive, the most instructive conversation, or what the, pres oh, the former president Jesus, said to you? Jesus, you know, I, when I entered into his presence, this guy is so magical. When I left his presence, you know what I said to my friends that came with me? I said, I visited this man. I visited this man only once. Look at how this man is the impact on me. The kinds of things we're saying, his environment, the minimalism, the rap, you know, ramrod straightness. I said to my friends, I said, if I visit this man two times, two more times, if anybody dares abuse him beside me, I can stab the person to death. It was that electrifying. For the first time in my life, I could understand why somebody would say if they, they abused the prophet, they killed him. Because I just saw this guy. So you became a Buharist all of a sudden. I have always been. I was just not in this party. I'm just, I don't, I don't you listen. When he was the head of state, I was the commercial college school cardinal, I getting ready to be head boy. I was not even head boy then. I was still a junior boy. We created, when he started his way against the discipline, I started way against the discipline in the school. Way against boys, way against the people are here who can testify to that. Why? I'm, look. I'm, I'm not the kind of man, let me yeah. say, well, I'm not the type of man who doesn't see the need to quarrel with my own parents if I need them to go in a certain way. But I'm not one of those ones who will refuse to give yeah. them their, their feathers I'm out of or time their flowers. I'm out of time on this conversation, but finally, you, are, you dragged your party to court. Yes. You Is can't, that fair? You, very, very. You can't run. Have you been able to exercise internal Everything mechanism? has been exercised. Listen, Shimo. You see, one of the painful things about democracy is that democracy imagines that the political party will throw up the best, and then the people will have to deal with the fate accompli or whatever they throw up. Now, I've noticed that the amount of issues we go and do as a result of parties not obeying their own laws, parties not obeying their self-same rule they gave themselves, is an issue. And how can they sit down there and tell me that they won't call neck of this party for how many months when everybody is screaming and shouting? How are they not able to do discipline? How are they not able to do the simple thing? Before we get to 2027 and become even a sorrier version of ourselves, it's best that people like me who have been here since the beginning begin to put their feet to the fire too. We'll test it in court. I believe that the next zone is that whatever the law creates, the law can dismantle. Shagun Shomi, chieftain of the People's Democratic Party. Thank you so much indeed for your time today. It was a pleasure. Thank you for having me. I appreciate me. it.